So give us your take on where we are and what comes next. Well, I think with the snapback of the sanctions on Iran, the lifting of these waivers on the five uh, countries, I think Iran is getting a little bit desperate. I think about 40% of their economy depends on energy. And now they've decided to retaliate in the Straits of Hormuz to stop oil tankers uh, that are not from Iran. And that's what you just saw the other day. And you saw four previous to that as well. Do we have the military capability to do what Secretary Pompeo said we're going to do, which is to protect the shipping in the Strait of Hormuz as well as the Persian Gulf? We do. It's expensive. Uh, we can escort these ships. Um, we had a drone aerial surveillance that detected an you know, IRGC vessel putting mines on these boats. We know from an ev evidentiary standpoint this came from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Um, and so um, I think this provocation is going to continue. Our, our role there is not to be... Uh, aggressive in going to war with Iran, but rather defensive, protecting our allies and keeping that uh, commerce uh, open. What is our ultimate goal here? Is it to get Iran back to the table to negotiate a broader agreement? Yeah, I think so. And um, we have what I call 100,000 tons of diplomacy uh, in, in the Persian Gulf. And I think uh, the ultimate goal is to get them back to the table to get a better deal <clears throat> than the JCPOA, one that would include uh, better inspections, uh, stopping their Iran, uh, their nuclear uh, production, um, and also the ICBM capability. Do we see any indication they're inclined to do that? Because thus far, all we've heard is we will not come back to the table unless you start taking off some of the sanctions. I don't think, um, yeah, look, we're talking about the Ayatollah. I, I don't think uh, he is sincere. Um, I, I worry about that. I think at the end of the day, uh, they're going to be so cash starved, and it will starve their terror operations that they have in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen, uh, that they'll have to um, come to the negotiation table or the people of Iran will rise up against them. Uh, well, is that part of our goal? Is regime change part of our goal? I would say regime change, but I think you know, when I, about 80 percent of the Iranians do not want to live under this oppressive theocracy that they're under. Um, and I've talked to a lot of Iranians in the United States, and they, they would like to see another form of government rather than the Ayatollah. Are you concerned we could throw out the baby with the bathwater? In this sense, we had Iran just today announce they're going to up their enrichment of uranium, mm -hmm. uh, go beyond, mm -hmm. it looks like, what was originally in the JCPOA. Is there a danger here that actually we'll be driving them back into a nuclear program? Well, and they're saying this uh, really in response to Europe. You know, Europe, e either buy our energy or we're going to do this. And so Europe has to choose between Iran and the United States. I think they're, they're going to choose the United States. Um, I do think you're right. We have to be careful. We don't want to go back to a full-blown Iranian nuclear production war. So the, you say Europe will ultimately side with the United States in part because we have power through the power of the U.S. dollar and clearing uh, as a practical matter. But yeah. what damage could we do to our relations with our Western European allies by really going to the well once too often on these sanctions? Well, I think we need to work with our allies on this and not uh, just make demands to our allies. I think they have to be a part of this. I think it's in the European best interest to want to bring Iran to the table to get a better deal than the JCPOA.